everybody. My name is Mark Hillier, and I'm a master here on the Arcanum. And tonight we have uh, Jennifer Hunter's Level 9 Critique. Um, lots of wonderful images that she's put up here on the group drive for it. And I'm excited to go through them. Um, wow, your work was really nice. Uh, Thank you. Greatly, greatly improved and different from uh, your level four stuff. So this is this is really nice. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself here and talk for a moment on um, the level nine work, and then we'll jump right into it. Okay. Okay. Well, um, my level nine work. Uh, basically encapsulated everything that I've learned along the way uh, during my time here at the Arcanum and uh, I, I just I try I try to constantly improve my craft and improve my artwork and um, so that's what I attempted to do in this level well you have achieved that all right well let me go ahead and share my desktop and we are going to jump right into it And if you would, tell me about this, this, this wonderful first image um, and what your vision was, what it was you were trying to create, and uh, your basic setup and how you made this happen, please. Um, well, I created that uh, image. Um, I did use a tripod. I was shooting uh, in the late afternoon, so it wasn't quite golden hour, but the, the sun was, I think, really pleasing. The light was pleasing, um, and I loved the texture of, of the clouds, and, um, and I loved the texture of the boat and the, the oldness, and I chose to do that in black and white because I love black and white and um, I just wanted to create a piece that that really popped and really I think you you get more I don't want to say more depth but you kind of do get more depth and texture I think sometimes when you take an image to black and white versus color um, and I think it just really brought out some of the intricacies of the of the oldness of the boat and um, and I liked I liked the vertical setup because it really accentuates the way the boat is kind of de decrepit and leaning into the bank and um, so I just wanted to emphasize all of that okay well I, I happen to agree with you Jennifer um, there's just something special about black and white um, uh, we lose color clarity of image uh, I believe when we when we work in black and white like this uh, it is much more intimate and you are right it, it does show uh, the decrepitness and the rot of the boat and this is one of my favorite styles of photography uh, old boats and I like the fact that you've got this uh, leaning over on its side and uh, it's just out there in the middle of nowhere, a uh, pretty good distance away from uh, the water. Um, I do see water here right under the bow. Is, is, uh, is that salt water or is that fresh water? You know, I'm not sure. Um, it was a little bit marshy in that area um, where the boat is. Um, but I think, I mean, it's, it's in an, a town called Inverness in Northern California near Point Reyes. So. Okay. It might it might be salt water. Yeah, because I'm I'm thinking it's tidal because you have that wonderful reflecting pool running uh, horizontally across the image right into the bow, and uh, that was very well placed and strategically captured. Uh, the composition of this is is just to put it simply, it's it's amazing. Thank you. Uh, you did a very very good job on setup and visualization, uh, and you made it happen. Um, I, I, as you saw, I did look at the the color version, which does stand alone quite nicely on its own. Mm, thank you. Um, but the the black and white is just something very very special. Uh, the the exposure is just dead on. Um, 
I love the wonderful graduated uh, gray uh, down to the bright at the horizon in the sky. Uh, the clouds don't interfere uh, with the boat itself. They're above and beyond. Um, and they don't take away from the composition by going through the wheelhouse. Um, uh, you've got wonderful uh, stair steps of alternating contrasts, uh, light, dark, light, dark, well, reflective, dark. <laughs> um, and the, the grasses underneath the hall are just stunning. Thank you. Um, this, is, this image is just perfect in every regard. Um, I'm wondering if perhaps it, it might be a very, and, it, and I mean very slight improvement to vignette the, the corners a bit, mm. uh, to maybe uh, add a bullseye effect uh, to the image. Oh, okay. Um, do, you, do you mind if we try it and see how that yeah, looks? Go ahead. Please. Um, boy, I just th this is just so good that I wish that I had this in my own portfolio. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're going to turn off the tonal contrast, um, but that does. Yeah, you, you, there are small things you could do to bring out structure in that sky using the tonal contrast. You see the difference there. Uh huh darkening up the background of the sky, and it gives the, the clouds almost a 3D effect. Oh, yeah. All right, and that, that's just a little tiny thing, too. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go down and let's just look. Uh, we'll do a lens vignette. That's just way too much. All right, here it is with nothing. Just a slight vignette in the corners. Almost not noticeable if we walk up to the picture for the very first time. Yet if I turn it on and off, mm -hmm. the very slight vignette tends to bullseye our eyes right into the boat. Mm -hmm. a, a very minor uh, processing upgrade, if you will, but something that you may want to consider down the line. Okay. Um, that was one of Ansel Adams' uh, big points, by the way, that uh, he wasn't finished with an image till he vignetted the corners. Now, oh, interesting. All right, um, but I have to tell you that this, this is an extremely powerful image, and it stands on its own without any of the post-processing um, uh, suggestions that I have made. They're just minor improvements, uh, but. Uh, Consider them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is this is a strong three, Jennifer. Okay. Great. Um, like I said, the, the very small things that we talked about uh, in post processing were just that small, almost insignificant. Um, but they did they did offer a, a minor improvement of sorts. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I just I love this image. This this is fantastic. Thank you. Um, I'd like to see you do more of this in the future. Uh, wonderful. Okay. Tell me about this one. What an amazing composition. Thank you. Um, I went to Denver at the beginning of October to visit a friend who is also a photographer, and we did a photo walk um, in downtown Denver. And this is uh, the new and and improved Union Station that um, recently reopened and um, I just love the lines in this shot and I you know originally took the image in color um, I I just I thought that it worked better <laughs> in in black and white um, I I did a couple of steps uh, to process this image, and I'm trying to remember what I did in the color first. Um, I don't know if I used if I used Nick color effects maybe to 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 bring up some of the some of the the, the highlights and the lowlights. Um, I don't remember exactly what I did, but then I know I definitely used um, sil Nick Silver Effects uh, to process the black and white. Um, I also 
I also uh, cleaned up some of the edges, like the corners, and got rid of some of the flaws in the sky that were that were deterring your eye. Mm -hmm. Just little things here and there that 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 made it even even um, just a more overall the composition. Uh, there's no distractions, in other words. <laughs> yeah, no, you boy, that is so true. Uh, your composition is just world class on this. Um, I love the C curve coming in, and we 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 start here at the C, but then we graduate into an S curve here. Uh, you've got the diagonal starting from this lower left corner and working its way in. Uh, you just did everything perfect in this. Uh, the exposure and the post-processing is just wonderful. Um, I do think that perhaps the sky is a little blown out in this area here. Okay. Uh, watch for that in the future, okay? Mm -hmm. And if I look at the histogram here, let me equalize the histogram. Um, the histogram shows absolutely nothing. Uh, climbing up the white side, it's it's well separated off the white and the black side. Uh, it's it's well equalized. You did a really good job. Um, tell me something on your monitor. Did the sky look a little burned on on that to you, or is maybe that's just perhaps how I have the, my monitor calibrated? And it's you know, I'm not sure because I I have an external 4K monitor that I use, um, but it doesn't have um, video. So right now I'm just looking at my MacBook Pro monitor, mm -hmm. and from what I can tell, I mean it, it's it's not super distinctive. The sky, I mean there there you know there's some grays and and um, it it's not really crisp, but I don't think it. I mean, it, I can see how you might might say it's a little bit blown out. But yeah, well, the thing of it is, is... I don't know what the original looked like. I don't think it was very interesting. <laughs> the, the color version wasn't, wasn't that, um, I don't know, it seemed kind of hazy. Wow, oh, that light is bright. All right. Um... But this 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 is a fabulous image. I wish that I could have been there to see it. it would have been nice to have had a uh, a train there, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think uh, I'm not sure that it's open to the trains quite yet. I think they're working on that, but I don't know. I don't know for sure. Okay. See, I was going to ask you how you got it with no people. Also, um, there were people around. Just not there specifically. I think that part might have been like sectioned off. Okay. Well, this image works way, 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 way better. It's a much more powerful image in black and white. Um, I, I think you did a wonderful job. Um, I just, like I said, this could just be on my monitor because the histograms don't normally lie, and the histogram looks beautiful. Okay. Okay. Um, I just this is just so wonderful. And you're making me do something that doesn't normally happen, and you're going to get another three. Wow! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is lovely. You know, you may have found a, a niche area that you should explore a lot more because uh, the black and white. Um, I prefer black and white pretty much over every other type of photography and this yeah. you're really punching my buttons here <laughs> well I've always I've always loved black and white I've had a had a, um, a fondness for it so and this is on the Sony right uh, yeah that was the Sony a6000 okay so it's a crop factor um, camera and I shot with the um, the 18105 mm -hmm. okay yeah, because if I look at our vertical lines here on the station themselves, they are just perfect. Uh, the supports for the, the uh, overhead are, are perfectly vertical. We're getting a little bit of tilting over here, so you probably shot it pretty wide, do you think? I Which, think so. Yeah, that would explain it. Let's see here. Yeah, this was uh, the other Sony. Of 
27 millimeters. Oh no, the 18 millimeters. Okay, yeah, yeah, that that's that's why. Ah. Okay. Yeah, no, beautiful, beautiful image. Um, this would be lovely on metallic paper, don't you think? Yes, it would be. And so would the other boat. Um, although the boat itself might be better on a, a rag paper. Mm. Uh, but this would be really nice on metallic piece. So very nicely done, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about this one. Okay. Um, that's when I was playing around with my macro lens on my um, my uh, Sony A99. I bought a 50 millimeter macro lens, and I was that was some some discovery I was trying to do uh, for that for that macro challenge that we had. And that's actually a very very tiny little daisy in the grass. That's a blade of grass next to it. So okay. it's, it's pretty small, um, and you know the image and color was was good. I liked it, but um, I wanted to do something a little more creative with it. Um, so I ended up taking that into Topaz Impression, and I played around with it in Topaz Impression. Um, and and I just I really liked the way it sort of had a, a painted canvasy look, um, but it was also a little bit monochrome. And I can't remember. Uh, it's been a while. I might have, I might have, uh, might have layered that in Photoshop and brought the color out. I don't, I don't remember exactly. All right. <laughs> but um, yeah, there is the original image, and I did crop it a little bit so it wasn't dead center. Mm -hmm. So to give it more visual interest. Yeah, no, that that was a, that was a very good choice. Um, I actually cannot. This flat part that stem, or is this just another blade of grass? That's a blade of grass. Okay, so we can't see the stem for the flower. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I like the use of impressions. Uh, I was going to ask what texture you use, but I, I, I can I can see how impressions would work very good for this as well. It's a little bit hot mm. in the flower itself, but that's an artistic choice that you made. Mm. Um, and that, that it works either way. Um, it's 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 very artsy. I, I like the the concept. Um, I I do think that you probably needed to police the edges a little bit more. Mm. See this blade here. Yeah. Even though you've lost it in the impressions, it, it's almost like it's been it's back in the bokeh behind the the main subject. Oh. Uh. This blade uh, and this blade are just ever so slightly distracting. Okay. Uh, and this one's worse because it's it's because it's a dark uh, strike up through this this mottled white background. Mm, yes. Um, I and what I might have done there is just simply take. Um, There's so many ways you could do this. E even a healing brush and just go over this, or clone this 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 white blob over it. Yeah. Um, and then you know the the dark area and then up here. Yep. Um, I see them now. I didn't see them before. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you gotta really be careful and police your edges on these. Um, had. Another thing you might have been able to do without going in and actually cloning them out yeah. is, again, vignetting the corners. That might have reduced the distractive nature of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. But, the, yeah, these are things that you have to worry about because they do cause distractions, and they take away from, from a lovely image. All right? Mm-hmm. Um, but... Well, well designed image, well thought out post processing. I'm going to give you two and a half on that. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I like what you did, um, and I really like the fact that you're exploring uh, monochromatic imagery. Um, this, this is very nice, and the choice of impressions was very good too. Thank you. 
I think I might have used um, used uh, the the NIC the NIC tools um, the the one that we always use. Yeah. To, by Visa. Yeah, by Visa to bring out the the yellow, and I guess I overdid it a little bit. Yeah, this like I said, it's just it's it's a wee bit hot. You know, maybe maybe just a half a stop right here. Mm -hmm. Um, and that if you could if you could darken that down, that would improve the overall image. Mm -hmm. And but like I said, look at these. Okay. And consider removing them or um, hiding them uh, in in vignetting as well. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, I like what you did. This was a very good job. Thank you. The mission. <laughs> Tell me about the this mission. One. Oh, um, I loved that day. I, I went on a um, field trip with my daughter's fourth grade class to the mission. That's a fourth grade trip here in California. Um, and it was overcast that day. And so the sky was perfect, perfect. Um, that was the original image. Um, and as you can see, I did do a little bit of um, editing to the image. A little, I, I think I cropped it a little. I also took um, the perspective tool in Photoshop and straightened up that left edge because it was it was leaning quite a bit, and and I think it was uh, successful to do that because I think it just really makes the image. There's no distractions that way. Okay. So um. And I edited this in. I know I definitely use Nick Nick tools or the the um the black and white tool. I can't remember what it's called right Silver, now. Silver Silver, effect. No, that's okay. Silver so, effects. I may have used on one uh, okay. to do a little bit of the color color work. Um, but I was just I I just futzed around with it a bit and. I, I'm not one who sits there and writes down every every step that I take, but I just really like the finished product, and I, I know that I also use the um, the Nick tool that that smooths out the the bits. The structure. <laughs> yes, the one that you know the the smooth smoothing one, so that there wasn't too much distraction. But I also wanted it to look like a sort of like a black and white photo would when you process a black and white photo. Oh yeah. And and I just love the way the tree was leaning and then there's the perspective of the building and I think it just it, it just totally makes it multi-dimensional um, and the clouds and everything I think it just really you know the the multidimensionality of the of the photo just makes it makes you stop and go makes you stop and look. Yeah, go ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just I, I love the composition. I love the subject. Uh, the leading line from the the uh, mission flowing into the image, the tree leaning. We've we've built built a triangle here. Um, this just works on so many different levels. I love the dark, moody sky. Um, I love the processing of the sky. It's not too much. It's not too little. It's just right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, the grass and the water in, in, in the lawn are wonderful. Um, but having said that, yes. um, the building itself, the mission itself, is, yeah. is, is way overexposed. Oh, okay. Okay. No, if you look here, see this edge where the, the wall folds around the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got a, 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 some texture here, but going down the arches, we have nothing but stark white. Mm. No textures, no nothing. Okay. Okay. Um, that's what I was looking at just a minute ago when I was in in Bridge. Mm. Um, I brought in. Uh, your raw image, 
And all I did was I was playing with the exposure and I was bringing the exposure down till I started to see some detail uh. in, in the wall here. And I'm setting the exposure for this wall. Gotcha. Everything else I, I would do in another editing tool. Um, I would I would also add a touch of clarity and a touch of vibrance because the you know, you got to be careful with vibrance because that'll give you color edging you know chromatic aberrations um, and then you can also play with the the highlights to further take down the whites and then the shadows to bring out the darker areas hmm. okay Interesting. Uh, here in in the raw conversion mm -hmm. then I would run the conversion with settings okay uh -huh. And, oh, and I didn't realize this isn't grass. This is a gravel, isn't it? Yes, it's gravel. Yeah. Um. And and then uh, bring it in, and you know, and, and do your line straightening. Your you know your um, and and repairing all that and processing the the sky. I don't know what that dark spot is up here in the corner. And well, right. that's, a little, that's a little vignetting. I, I was using a... The lens I, hood? Um, I don't know if I had the lens hood on or not. I know that I was definitely using a polarizer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, could, it could be that. And that's, that's no big deal. That doesn't mean a thing. Um, but like I said, this is how you would set your exposure to compensate for the brightest part of the scene, which was this wall. All right, and everything else will fall darker, but we can fix that in um, Color Effects Pro and Viviza, and then go into your silver effects or your topaz black and white and do your conversion. But you got to get this wall right first. Okay. Okay. Yep. But but you see what I mean about n no texture and, and absolutely nothing but stark white. Yep, I do. Okay, good enough. Good enough. All right, I'm going to give you two and a half on that, too. Thank you. I really like that image. I, I, I know we, we talked a bit more about it and made suggestions, but that was just stunning composition. Thank you. And to be honest with you, Jennifer, mm -hmm. you can get the composition, the post-processing will come down the line. Uh, seeing the scene and setting the camera up for that is probably one of the more important lessons that you will learn. And you did a good job. All right, tell me about this one. I, I, with this image, what I was trying to do is create, create. So I, I got down low and took the shot. I didn't take a straight-on shot of the statue. I wanted to give, give the viewer a perspective like a three-dimensional viewpoint. I wanted, I wanted the statue to pop. I wanted it to come forward in the image and, and really, <coughs> really just be three-dimensional. And, and I got the background of the mission in, in the frame because I wanted to accentuate the fact that this was a mission. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you've created duality of function here. Right, and and the name the the name the title I came up with for this is called praise, and um, I just I felt like it worked much better in black and white. And when you when you look at this picture at a hundred percent, it's it's almost eerie because I feel like the statue almost looks real. I don't know. I mean, it just it, it just really like, and and so what I, in the post processing I did add a little bit of of retina effect to the eyes. <laughs> there was a little bit of that going on naturally, but I accentuated a little bit more just to make it even more pronounced. Good job. 
Thanks. And I, I tried to lessen the shadow as much as I could, and that's why I chose to process it with this amount of light and dark in the in the image. Um, I definitely use silver effects on this one, um, and I used a setting that, that originally it, it had a frame around it, and I didn't like the frame. I thought it detracted from the image, so I, I took that off. But um, I just really wanted wanted it to be multidimensional. All right. Well, <clears throat> you achieved it. Um, in fact, if you had darkened the sky or, or added structure to the sky and the clouds, it would have taken away from it because it would have merged the sky more with the statue. Um, as it is, this, it, it is a, a three-dimensional image. I, I, it, it's almost as though I could reach in between his arms and, and uh, know that the sky was way off in the distance. I mean, the, there is a dimensionality to his arms. Uh, that you, you have brought out in an amazing fashion. Thank you. Um, I, I wouldn't change a thing in the post-processing on this at all. Um, I, I might take away a little bit of space here on the left, mm. uh, crop it in a bit. Uh, this might work in a totally square crop, too, uh, if you lost the tree. But, you know, that's just that's an artistic vision thing, and that that's solely up to you. Um, but uh, no, the post-processing on this is perfect because any darker in that sky and it would have ruined the effect. Um, I like how you've brightened the statue. Um, uh, the tree and the church is a bit out of focus, which is okay. Uh, especially for the church. Um, the, the tree being out of focus is just distracting. It's distracting. Yeah, just slightly. Um, that's why I, I said, you know, maybe this would have worked better in a square crop where you just have a little bit on each side, the statue and the church, and maybe get rid of that tree. Hmm. Um, yeah, the, the tree doesn't add anything to this image whatsoever. And being that it's slightly in focus and slightly out of focus, my eyes keep getting drawn over to it. Gotcha. Um, vignetting might have fixed that too. Mm -hmm. That's another consideration. Okay. But as presented, and according to your vision in taking it, you achieved every single check mark in your vision. Um, I can I can see nothing wrong with this image. Um, it is a, a a good image. It's not as powerful as your first two. Um, but it's a different subject, and you're telling a different story with it, so that's okay. Um, I like it. Very good job. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to give you a three on that. Thank you. Um, but think about what I said about the square format for this particular image, because the tree is a little bit distracting here in this. I, I see that now. I, there was there was something on the left side of the frame originally too. There was another tree limb there. Yeah, I got rid of that. But, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I got rid of the building behind him too because that was annoying and that distracted. But I didn't I didn't go far enough to the right, but. Yeah, I could see if that was removed, it would be even better. You did a good job on removing that roof line. Thank you. Uh, wow, you're turning into a post-processing monster, aren't you? <laughs> God, and I love your black and white work. I, 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 I've, I've seen some black and white from you in the past, but this is, this is nice. This really works for me. Thank you. Oh, goodness gracious, Mark. There we go. There we are. I am back. Um, an amazing set of images, Jennifer. Uh, you should be proud of each and every one of them. Uh, everything that I picked on was just minor. Um, but... Um, that's why we record these videos so that you can go back and refer to it later on. Um, the, the requirements were that you maintain an average of 
and uh, you actually uh, beat that with your first three images. So, well done. Thank you. I, ex I expect much more and much greater works from you uh, in 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 uh, Sphere uh, One. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate all of the support of the other cohort members. I'm going to stop broadcast here if you all hold on a second. <laughs>